Okay, this is Francis Brabazon, one of the intimate Mondelez of Baba. He lived there at Marizad for the last 10 years of Baba's life. And he wrote, Men are born and are reborn until they die into the deathless and are never born again. But one man, being birthless and deathless, takes birth again and again because of the cry of the world for relief from the burden of living and to mirror himself in the tears of his lovers. J. Baba. So here's Cassandra's gonna be able she's gonna be able to do all the tech work and you all most of you have gotten quotes. If you don't have quotes, <clears throat> find something that you like. And you can read, you can just raise your hand digitally. And if you, if you want to say something about the quote, how it might resonate with you, feel free, you know, to, to comment on that. And I think of these quotes, they're all facets of Baba's, of the Baba's one truth coming in from uh, innumerable camera angles. And they're quite beautiful, and uh, <clears throat> many of them are taken from the discourses, and some of the you know <clears throat> some of the uh, other books that Baba has written. So, hey, we have someone from India. What time? <laughs> so we have people coming from long distances too. So let let's uh, anything, uh, Cassandra, anything to say, anything that any question that anybody has. Yeah, just that, uh, um, you know, remember to raise your hand from the reactions button, or you can use uh, the shortcuts Alt, Alt, what is it? Alt Y for a PC or Option Y for a Mac. And and if anybody would like to ha have a quote read a second time, don't hesitate because uh, some of these things are very powerful and bear hearing again. Okay, so Cassandra, you're this is you got right, the ready? yeah. We're gonna start with Martha Clancy. I uh, yeah, I got this um, um, sent to me. Um, it is easier for me to come as an avatar than for you to receive my grace. The problem is that once you have been conditioned by duality, there is no end to the conditions which restrict your ability to receive my grace. Therefore, it is difficult for my grace to flow from me to you. That is why it is not as easy as it sounds for me to get the whim to cause you to receive my grace. As a matter of fact, it is flowing sufficiently all the time to fill one and all receptacles everywhere. There is rarely a vessel which is not filled with other things. A vessel must first be emptied before it can be filled by the flow of my grace. It is also my grace which helps a vessel to become completely emptied in the first place. Beautiful. Very nice. Which makes me feel that we're all pretty darn lucky. Uh, I don't know when my vessel was emptied um, or has ever been emptied, but perhaps all of our vessels were emptied just enough that we're here today. <laughs> Beautiful. Race. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, lovely. And yeah, Could you the more we empty more out. Time? Go ahead, what? Could you repeat that quote one more time? Oh, sure. Okay, so it's a long one, but I'd be happy to. Am I still, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. It is easier for me to come as an avatar than for you to receive my grace. The problem is that once you have been conditioned by duality, there is no end to the conditions which restrict your ability to receive my grace. Therefore, it is difficult for my grace to flow from me to you. That is why it is not as easy as it sounds for me to get the whim to cause you to receive my grace. 
As a matter of fact, it is flowing sufficiently all the time to fill one and all receptacles everywhere. There is rarely a vessel which is not filled with other things. A vessel must first be emptied before it can be filled by the flow of my grace. It is also my grace which helps a vessel to become completely emptied in the first place. Beautiful. Anybody want to comment on that before we go to the next one? It's probably a good idea for people to read their quote twice anyway, don't you think, Jeff? Yeah, unless they happen to be short and, and under, you know. But yeah. uh, just see, if anybody calls for it, fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. We want to make sure we have time for everybody to have a chance. Okay. Well, we have Hugh Flick. Hugh Flick is next. All right. Uh, I have a quote on the light of universal love. Baba says, how many habits has a person been able to break through love, which he would never have the strength to break without love? And when the love is universal love, all habits, which are detrimental either to the individual or the social order will be dissolved in its light. How about reading that again? That went pretty fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, how many habits has a person been able to break through love, which he would never have the strength uh, to break without love? And when the love is universal love, all habits which are detrimental either to the individual or the social order will be dissolved in its light. Beautiful. Yes. Anything, and you're like I say, you you can make any comment you want or w whatever you like. Yeah, well, that's uh, this the idea of the universal light is, uh, is is really the key to this, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Hugh. Um, we have Janet Jacobs next. Well, we can't hear you, Janet. Uh. <clears throat> Thank you. When you feel angry or have lustful thoughts, remember Baba at once. Let my name serve as a net around you so that your thoughts, like mosquitoes, may keep buzzing around you and yet not sting you. In that manner, you can prevent unwanted thoughts from turning into unwanted actions and thus eventually bring your heart to the purification required for me to manifest therein. Mm. And I just have a comment about that. I, I, I mean, I never exactly feel identify with angry and lustful thoughts, but I have a lot of other thoughts that are annoying, to say the least. <laughs> I think, and I was having some of the, I was in the midst of some of those thoughts today in spite of all the Baba stuff. And then I did the Debbie Nordeen sing along where we sang Baba's name over and over. And it really, I, I, I could, it was, it was this anecdote that this is talking about right now, right here. <laughs> it was that anecdote. I mean, by just singing Baba's name with a group of people. I mean, I was just saying it to myself in the morning and it was like, and eh, <laughs> not strong enough, but that was so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Can you read you, it one Janet. more time, please? I'm sorry. Sure. When you feel angry or have lustful thoughts, remember Baba at once. Let my name serve as a net around you so that your thoughts, like mosquitoes, may keep buzzing around you and yet not sting you. In that manner, you can prevent unwanted thoughts from turning into unwanted actions and thus eventually bring your heart to the purification required for me to manifest therein. Beautiful. Very nice, thank you. Inga. I'm trying to find you. Oh, there you are, let me. Hey, Baba. There we go. It, yeah. Did you mean me? Yes, please. 
Oh, hello. I'm, I've joined you from England. Oh, wonderful. I'm having a very hard time because you keep fading out. And I just want to send my love and Barbara's love to everybody. Happy Barbara Day. Um, I have not got a quote, but I have written a poem. And I don't know if that's allowed. Go for it. Go for it. And I, it is, the poem is called J. Barber. <clears throat> and I wrote, An angel came to her and whispered secrets only she should know. An angel held her as she birthed a son so long ago. An angel dried her tears of birth divine, where heavenly and earthly love entwine. And holding you, she wept with joy. An angel dried her tears as she beheld her boy. You came to her and then to us. You came to grow and then to waken us. You came to sow the seeds of love. You taught us silence so that we might hear. And your love for all, that is, you show that, that we are equal and the same. You show us that there's no time to tell, that in the moment we must dwell, that our hearts are yours alone, and we will strive to be as one. And like the kiss that wakened you, you will kiss us, and we then will awaken too. A multitude of angels came to share good news that we should know, and angels praise the day you chose to come to be with us that we might in your love's ocean grow. Jay Baba. Beautiful, Inga. Lovely poem. Wow. Beautiful. That was great. Thank you. Oh, so, thank you very much. Jay so sweet to have you join us from England. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> thank you. What? Are you in Myrtle Beach? Well, these people well, on the screen are from all over. California, all right. Montreal, uh, India. All right. Eng England, India, all over. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Jay Baba. Yeah, that was lovely. Beautifully written. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, we have Marvin's hand up next. Okay, and following me, we have Alan Ray next to me here. Oh, cool. I a quote here. Not through desperate self-seeking, but through constant self-giving, is it possible to find the self of all selves. Not by ignoring human suffering, but by handling it with creative love is the gateway open for eternal for life eternal not through callous indifference or aloofness but through active selfless service is secured the attainment of that transcendental and illimitable truth which is at the heart of the illusory universe oh wow Beautiful, lovely. I know it's hard not to want these read a second time. <laughs> and if anybody wants it read a second time, don't hesitate. Yeah. Beautifully, beautiful. <clears throat> Marvin. To strive for. Still a long way from that. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Ellen Ray. Um. Could Marvin read his again, please? Okay. 
not through desperate self-seeking, but through constant self-giving, is it possible to find the self of all selves. Not by ignoring human suffering, but by handling it with creative love is the gateway opened for life eternal. Not through callous indifference or aloofness, but through active selfless service is secured the attainment of that transcendental and illimitable truth, which is at the heart of the illusory universe. M.S. Irani. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead, Ellen Ray. If someone speaks angrily with you, be humble with him. I want you to help me by helping one another through practicing greater tolerance toward all, even those who cause you provocation. I want you to do this through love and not through compulsion. M.S. Irani. Beautiful. Thank you, Alan. Oh. I'm going to have to leave. That's, that's, yeah. It was. Alan Ray, do you think, does that mean um, love not through force, but what was the last sentence? I want you to do this through love and not through compulsion. Like compulsion means force? Mm -hmm. Force. Compulsion would be force. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You want to say anything about it, um, Alan Ray? Pretty self evident, pretty clear, mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. Um, okay. Just thought maybe it meant something special to you. Well, we're, we're all striving to be more humble, are we not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. All right. Thank you, dear. Yum. <clears throat> Next, we have Paula Roper. That's really interesting because mine goes right along with um, Alan's and um, Marvin's. It is not the act that endows a gift with spiritual meaning. It is the spirit in which it is given. In fact, a large donation may, be, may often be accompanied with pride or some selfish motive. Then it loses its spiritual value. Even a small gift given with humility and utterly unselfish love is endowed with much greater spiritual value than my Sarani. <clears throat> I think um, for the last three, um, it's difficult. <laughs> it's what we aspire to, but you know, when it's like when we um, kind of take a look at our motives and, you know, all that might be going on. Just trying to get to that point where it is truly unselfish and uh, like we're not there, but Baba is. Yeah. Paula, could you read that Beautifully. again? Sure. <laughs> it is not the act that endows a gift with spiritual meaning. It is a spirit in which it is given. In fact, a large donation may often be accompanied with pride or some selfish motive. Then it loses its spiritual value. Even a small gift given with humility and utterly unselfish love is endowed with much greater spiritual value. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Mayher Prasad, where are you? Please unmute and share.
Can you unmute my hair? Are you there? Sorry, I thought I was unmute. All right, so I'm going to read this. Thank you. It is, it is your love for yourself that loses me and your love for God that finds me. In order to awaken me in your heart, you should always call out to me saying, Baba, Baba, continuously. Then I, who am in your heart, will not find any pleasure in remaining asleep. Let alone sleep, I shall not find time even to doze. Ms. Irani. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't know if you people know Preeti who works at the Gateway, but that's that was a message that Baba gave to her grandma and grandpa. <clears throat> that very, they were missing Baba, not having the personal contact, and Baba said, just say my name and everything, and I will be there with you. You're, wow. I, I respond to my name, so I come when you call. Yeah. Jeff, who, who, what are the names of her grandparents? Uh, Prem and Girja uh, Kilnani. That's Vinod and Raj's parents. Yeah. Yeah, I know them well. <clears throat> Could Mayor Prasad read that again? Yeah, sure. Thanks. And a little, a little bit louder, Mayor, if you can. Okay. Thank you. Is this better? Good. Very good. It is your love for yourself that loses me and your love for God that finds me. In order to awaken me in your heart, you should always call out to me saying, Baba, Baba, continuously. Then I, who am in your heart, will not find any pleasure in remaining asleep, let alone sleep I shall not find time even to doze. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. Okay, we have Anthony Cortez. <clears throat> okay, this is a long one, guys. Hold on to your seats. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> We got you. <laughs> In the divine scales, vice and virtue are necessary experiences one goes through before attaining the supreme balance of self realization, which is beyond all opposites. Good is like a clean mirror that reflects the image of God. When true knowledge is gained, you realize that the reflection is the image of your own self, the God that is in all and in everything. Bad is like the dusty particles that accumulate and hide the image of God until the mirror presents only a distorted or blank surface. It cannot affect the object being reflected. It merely distorts your vision. Love is the cleanser that wipes the mirror bright and enables you to behold with increasing clarity the indivisible entity that permeates all life. The negative experience of the bad with its consequent suffering ultimately disgusts a person and leads them to the positive force of good, thus awakening divine love. M.S. Sirani. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that quote a lot. It it reminded me of what we were just talking about with the grace, how it, it's always there. You know, the, the mirror, the clean mirror is always there. It just has a covering over it. So um, I like that, that idea that, uh, you know, it's nothing we're trying to get, but it's already there. We're just trying to re-remember it or you know, uncover what's always been there. Grace is like Windex. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to hear that again. 
I know it's long, but I'd like to hear it. All right. I'm going to try to pick up the speed on it, see if I can get it. <laughs> okay. In the divine scales, vice and virtue are necessary experiences one goes through before attaining the supreme balance of self-realization, which is beyond all opposites. Good is like a clean mirror that reflects the image of God. When true knowledge is gained, you realize that the reflection is the image of your own self, the God that is in all and in everything. Bad is like the dusty particles that accumulate and hide the image of God until the mirror presents only a distorted or blank surface. It cannot affect the object being reflected, merely distorts your vision. Love is the cleanser that wipes the mirror bright and enables you to behold with increasing clarity the indivisible entity that permeates all life. The negative experience of the bad with its consequent suffering ultimately disgusts a person and leads them to the positive force of good, thus awakening divine love. J. Bob. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you, Anthony. These are very uplifting. Diana Goodhart. Oop, we can't hear you, Diana. Uh oh. Uh, there we can. go. Yeah. There mine, we go. mine is short to balance. The real lover is never influenced by the world and what people think of him. He will not even care for his life. He will remain what he is, totally indifferent to the world, unashamed of anything. Read that I, again. Yeah. I will, but I want to say, first of all, I love this quotation. I absolutely love it. It's such an affirmation of who the, who the lover is. And as only Baba could do, it's an affirmation with three sort of negative words. There's never, there's not, and there's the word indifferent. And it still seems to me anyway, like an affirmation. The real lover is never influenced by the world and what people think of him. He will not even care for his life. He will remain what he is, totally indifferent to the world, unashamed of anything. That reminds me of a Rumi quote where he says, dogs bark at the moon, but still it continues on its course unaffected. <laughs> okay, we have Robin Vogel. Go ahead and unmute. So this one, it's really good. I think it's um, control, which has true spiritual value, does not consist in the mechanical repression of thoughts and desires, but is the natural restraint exercised by perception of positive values discovered during the process of experience. This process of readjustment in the light of true values takes the form of what we call controlling the mind. It is an effort of the mind to overcome its own inertia. It is of true value. It, it is an attempt of the mind to arrive at self-adjustment in order to release the expression of true values of life. This process of replacing lower values by higher values is sublimation, which consists of diverting the psychic energy in parentheses, locked up in the old sanskaras toward creative and spiritual ends. It made me think a lot, <laughs> I have to tell you. Robin, read that once again. Okay. Really <clears throat> deep. Yeah. Control which, ha control, which has true spiritual value, does not consist in the mechanical repression of thoughts and desires, but is the natural restraint exercised by perception of positive values discovered during the process of experience. This controlling, I'm sorry, 
This process of readjustment in the light of true values takes the form of what we call controlling the mind. It is an effort of the mind to overcome its own inertia. It is an attempt of the mind to arrive at self-adjustment in order to release the expression of true values of life. This process of replacing lower values by higher values is sublimation, which consists of diverting the psychic energy locked up in the old sanskaras toward creative and spiritual ends. And I just um, think about, you know, controlling my mind. I have resistance to that. And, you know, I want God to do it all. <laughs> but I know better. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's um, but in a way, what I feel like I have to do is, you know, catch myself when I have negative thoughts or thoughts that are holding me back and locked up in my old sanskaras. And then, you know, from my life experience, by being able to then know that those are negative thoughts and getting in my way, I need to really kind of ask God to help me you know, change my mind. I have to decide to change my mind and go back to letting Baba take over my thoughts. <laughs> Beautiful, Robin. Can I make a comment, Jeff? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, for me, I'm hearing this in a lot of these quotes, this notion of how much Baba wanted us to be ourselves, to not judge ourselves, but just try to turn ourselves over to him, you know? Yeah, yep. <clears throat> Cassandra, the... can you quote, uh, can you silence me? I'm having a hard time because of the sun. Sure. So find my mute button. <laughs> I lost you. Thank you. There you go. Thanks. Okay, we have Tina G. Hiding under Mayor's friend. I have many aliases. Well, yeah. as you know, Cassandra, I didn't get a quote because Hotmail mm -hmm. blocks any mail from Gmail that's not in my address book. I'll try to help you work that out afterwards, okay? Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, but um, I do remember this quote, which is real happiness lies in making others happy. And I just wanted to share an example of that from my life. And um, so I had this neighbor, I don't know her very well, but she has two sets of twins. And um, once she told me that she really liked Sasha Baron Cohen because she went to college with him. And then later they went to camp together. And so I just stored that information away. And about five years later, I got an invitation to a movie screening of one of his movies and he was gonna be there. So I invited her. And when he saw her, he was just <laughs> really nice to her and she was just beaming. And it, it just, I just, I just got like such a warm feeling that you know, she got to see, reconnect with him and he was nice to her and she's so grateful. And it was, it was just, you know, a really, really wonderful moment in my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I could attest to the fact it's true. Beautiful, Tina, beautiful story. Lovely. <clears throat> okay. Pam and Danny Rubenstein. Together or separate? Um, Danny. Uh-oh, we lost you. Pam, we lost and, your... Yeah, we need to unmute him. I thought it was <laughs> unmuted. Maybe somebody unmuted me and then I unmuted. Yeah, I think we were doing it both at the same time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, my quote is, uh, the greatest need of humanity today is love. Love divine, which is pure and selfless, which awakens one to the proper sense and understanding of his real duty in life, to find true happiness in giving, not receiving, in serving and not in being served, and more willingly participating in the suffering of others 
than in their happiness. Mm. Pam, can you read that once again? Sure. The greatest need of humanity today is love. Love divine, which is pure and selfless, which awakens one to the proper sense and understanding of his real duty in life. Find true happiness in giving, not receiving, in serving, and not in being served and in more willingly participating in the suffering of others and in their happiness. That's Ronnie. Beautiful. Mm. And to me, it's pretty self-explanatory, just, you know, the more we can give and not <clears throat> be, um, the, the happy, happier we'll be. <clears throat> it's like Dina's quote, earlier. Danny always seems very happy. <laughs> You're doing it right. <laughs> he's a happy-go-lucky person. <laughs> Sorry he's not here. He ran out to the store, but I thought he'd be back in time. He may be <laughs> at the rate we're going. Yeah. <clears throat> Pam, that was beautiful. That was the first time I've heard that to more willingly participate in the sufferings than the happiness that is i need to work on that thanks for reading that oh yeah. yeah well i just received it from jeff and jeff thank you for sending me that yeah no now we can get angela does all this tech work yeah yep. thank you angela <clears throat> she lets baba pick them for everybody yep That's thank, a good you, job. thank you pam okay michelle schaefer Hi, sweetie. There you go. Hi, Jay, Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Hello. Um, you know, I actually got two quotes, and I actually have Marvin's quote. Marvin's sleeping. And so I don't know, should I read them all three, or should I choose to just read mine and wait for Marvin's? He can read Why don't anyway. you read? Oh. Yeah, read yours ahead. and we'll come back to you. How's that? Yeah, and my Marvin's is super short, but okay. So the first one I saw was from my personal email rather than my Michelle Schaefer music email. This is my email on my phone. When the mind is gloomy, depressed, or disturbed, its actions are chaotic and binding. Hence arises the supreme need to maintain cheerfulness, enthusiasm, and equipoise poise under all circumstances. One must try to be cheerful, even in trying periods. It is a divine art to look cheerful. It helps others. And I gotta say, wow. <laughs> That is just what I kind of like, okay, yes, because it's really starting. Art in limbo is really starting to affect me. I just have to say, because those of you who know me, I have an art business. I'm a musician, but I have an art business, and that's how I make a living. Well, there you go. And Bob is going, here, let's shake it all up and shake it up. Okay, so, and I have to remain, try not to be upset. Read it once again, Michelle. Huh? Read it once again. Okay. When the mind is gloomy, depressed, or disturbed, its actions are chaotic and binding. Hence arises the supreme need to maintain cheerfulness, enthusiasm, and equipoise under all circumstances. One must try to be cheerful, even in trying periods. It is a divine art to look cheerful. It helps others. And we yeah. can't help but think about the new way, right? Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. So the other one I received on my map, my my laptop. I haven't even read this yet, so here we go. When it is recognized that there are no claims greater than the claims of the universal divine life which without exception includes everyone 
and everything. Love will not only establish peace, harmony, and happiness in social, national, and international spheres, but it will shine in its own purity and beauty. Yeah. Beautiful. Could you read that one again, please? Sure. We need this right now, don't we? All the time. When it is recognized that there are no claims greater than the claims of the universal divine life, which without exception includes everyone and everything, love will not only establish peace, harmony, and happiness in social, national, and international spheres, but it will shine in its own purity and beauty. MSRA, all of them. Very nice. Thank you, dear. Next we have Judy. Where are you, Judy? She's in Seattle. Oh, that's right. I know you. <laughs> we need you to unmute him. Sorry, was that my name that was called out? No, we're looking for Judy. We'll, we'll be. Okay, I'm Nine sorry. Are, we're working our way to you. Oh, <laughs> we got Judy I'm now. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, <clears throat> it was mentioned a moment ago that, that Baba personally selected each of these quotes um, for each person. And that was precisely what I felt when I read this one. Good. <laughs> All other essential qualities will come to the aspirant if he follows faithfully the whispering of the unerring voice of love that speaks from his own heart, shedding light on the path to lose hold of that mantle of this guide is to find only despair. M.S. Irani. Once again, Judy. <laughs> All other essential qualities will come to the aspirant if he follows faithfully the whisperings of the unerring voice of love that speaks from his own heart, shedding light on the path to lose hold of this mantle, of this guide, is to find only despair. M.S. Arani. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Rosalie Dunphy is next. Rosalie, I didn't never knew that was your last name. <laughs> it is for some time now. Um, Spirituality does not consist of intellectual knowledge of true values, but in their realization. It is this knowledge of inner realization that is worthy of being called spiritual understanding. And this is far more dependent upon the heart than upon the mind. Knowledge of the intellect alone is on the same footing as mere information. And being superficial, it moves on the surface of life. It gives the shadow and not the substance of reality. The hidden depths of the ocean of life can be gauged only by sounding the heart. Me here, Baba. Wow. Mm. Wow. 
so clear. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a perfect one for you, Rosalie. I think it's pretty well perfect for everyone. <laughs> Being, I guess I am everyone too. That's true. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Dave up. Next we have Gilda. Gilda, yeah. Gilda? Hi. Yeah, I'm Gilda. My apologies, Gilda. No problem. So my quote is, in all climes and in all places, man is constantly striving for happiness. But there are very few who have it because there are very few who truly know the secret of happiness. Man is constantly feeling thwarted and limited, and he is ever in the clutches of unrelieved agony of suffering because not knowing his own true nature, he identifies himself with the body, the desires, or the limited individual mind, and thereby becomes a victim to their respective limitations and sufferings. It is only by knowing himself to be different from and beyond all these that he can fully enter into the divine heritage of the abiding happiness, which is inalienable from his true being as God. M.S. Irani. <clears throat> Beautifully read, clearly, very clearly read. Thanks. Hmm. Thank you. Jim. All I can say is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect response. It would fits you, you. It fits you perfectly. Yeah. Would Thank you read you. it again, please, Jilda? Sure. In all climes and in all places man is constantly striving for happiness but there are very few who have it because there are very few who truly know the secret of happiness man is constantly feeling thwarted and limited and he is ever in the clutches of unrelieved agony of suffering because not knowing his own true nature, he identifies himself with the body, the desires, or the limited individual mind, and thereby becomes a victim to their respective limitations and sufferings. It is only by knowing himself to be different from and beyond all these that he can fully enter into the divine heritage of the abiding happiness, which is inalienable from his true being as God. M.S. Irani. Beautiful. Nicely read too, thank you. It's beautiful, so true. Okay, Seppi, we're ready for you, dear. Okay. Be patient. It's not always the words and things, however frankly said, that matter, but the right time and the way they are put. There are times when one has to discriminate. Sometimes things spoken with the best of intentions totally spoil the case if said, when silence would serve the purpose for the time being. The recipient thereby loses the benefit of the advice and words of wisdom that would have done him good if said in quieter moments when he would have understood their import and even appreciated it. M.S. Irani. Can you do, Seppi, can you do that again? Sure. And I like the accent, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit for the accent. I came with it, or it came with me. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Although when I, after living in LA, when I came back to England, everybody thought I was American for a bit. So I must have had that <laughs> British woman with an American accent sound. But anyway, here we are. Be patient. 
It's not always the words and things, however frankly said, that matter, but the right time and the way they are put. There are times when one has to discriminate. Sometimes things spoken with the best of intentions totally spoil the case if said, when silence would serve the purpose for the time being. The recipient thereby loses the benefit of the advice and words of wisdom that would have done him good if said in quieter moments when he would have understood their import and even appreciated it. MS Irani. When I first got this, I was I, I was a bit confused because I'm not sure if they're given to us by Baba. Does that mean that's something I need to work on? Because I thought that's actually what I always say. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. I didn't think about necessarily when you say it. But then I thought of something that happened yesterday at work that wasn't that consequential, but uh, somebody had said something that was quite inflammatory and I just just decided to be silent. <laughs> And so that was interesting. And then I thought of a couple of other instances, but I also thought I've been using that quite a bit with my son, who's very intense. He's 29. He's very like me. And we recently have really, our relationship's getting even stronger than it already was because I'm learning to keep silent in those moments and just be there for him and love and listen to him rather than advise unless he asks me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether that's Bubba saying you're doing, you're on the right road or you've got a yeah. load, load more to go. What do you think? Sounds like you're on the right road. <laughs> a, a confirmation from Baba. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jeff. That's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he shares these things with us or sends these things to us because he knows we can recite them for others with the full force of our own internal awareness. How's that? <laughs> Thank you, Cassandra. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sue Lerner. You're up. There, can you hear me? Y yes, yes, we hear you. Okay. To help others through one's own example, one must get not only thoroughly drenched, but drowned in love. As a prelude, one should attempt to create a balance between the thoughts of the mind and the feelings of the heart. Mind, however, works much faster. Thoughts are like lightning. First, there is the flash and later the sound of thunder. For an equilibrium to be reached, the mind, which is the seat of desires, must be made to function more slowly in order to keep pace with the heart. And no amount of silence or fasting can accomplish this. If the individual desires the enforcement of equilibrium in the true direction, a consistent acceleration of feelings should be made so that feelings supersede thoughts, i.e. the heart supersedes the mind. To achieve this, the only effective fuel is love, unadulterated love, MS Irani. I thought that was really interesting and I had not heard it before. And um, I don't know, in the world today, you know, it just seems like with technology and media and this and that, that the mind is constantly going faster and faster. We want instant gratification all through the mind. And so for this to suggest that for an equilibrium to be reached, that the mind must be made to function more slowly in order to keep pace with the heart. I really thought that was striking because it seems like it's totally flipped from a lot of the way things are perceived today in our culture. So I thought it was yeah. really good. <clears throat> hey, Sue, would you mind, because uh, I don't know if these people heard your story of uh, early morning of Baba's birthday. Do you mind sharing that again? You know, that's bringing me to tears. Oh, dear. <laughs> Jeff. Sure. 
Uh, I'll be happy to. Um, my experience on Baba's birthday, which is clearly today, I had been visiting the center in Myrtle Beach off and on for a number of years, but I was not a Baba lover. I would come down there for um, just spiritual reflection and retreat, but I was not a Baba lover and I didn't really uh, interact with people because everybody, well, you know, you know, Baba lovers on the center, but I kind of kept on the fringe. But one time I knew, I knew that it was Baba's birthday. And so I thought, well, I just was drawn to go down there <clears throat> at that time. And um, it's so at, at was, five in the morning. Yes. Yeah. And so I was in my, I was in the cabin and I knew that the protocol for the day was to, for everybody to uh, arrive at Baba's compound and Baba's house at five in the morning, you know, for the, the celebration. So about 4.30, I looked out the window and it, you know, cold and dark. And I don't think I'd walked to Baba's house prior to that. So I was looking out the window and thinking, you know, I'm not a Baba lover. I don't know if uh, it's appropriate for me to go to this. I might be imposing. I, I'm just not sure. So I turned around and sitting on my bed in his white sadra and his pink jacket was Baba. And he said, are you coming to my celebration or not? And I looked out the window again and turned back around and of course he was gone. But that was, you know, clearly uh, you don't just not go. So I went, it was the first time I'd been to Baba's house and uh, it was quite something, especially because I was not a Baba lover uh, in, in, in my mind at that time. But it was uh, obviously a moment of wonderful grace. So Beautiful. Happy Baba. Yeah, happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. That was a real birthday present. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Ray Spagnolo, did I murder your name? I hope I got it right. Go ahead and unmute. Oh, yeah. Oops, I muted you. I was trying to tell you to unmute. Go ahead and unmute again. All right, Thank now? You. Yep, you're good. Hi. <laughs> you did. Spagnolo, 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 like, like someone like my dad used to say, call me anything but late for supper. So, okay. all right, this is my quote. The disciple feels that he is nothing in himself, but in and through the master, he is enlivened by the prospect of being everything. Mirababa. So when I first read this, I had to think of on it, and uh, two things. I I realized that really nothing in this world has has en enlivened me, has given me any sort of reason to do anything. Uh, Music-wise, um, um, that was the only thing that maybe got me moving. But as far as really getting up and doing anything and feeling fulfilled, um, this, what it is, is it, it has to involve in some way Meher Baba and, and it's getting up in the morning and saying Baba's name and repeating his name. So that was, um, I, I feel that probably that's why people come to, uh, to Baba because the world is such a empty, useless, superficial thing. That's my, uh, yeah. Ray, Ray, read it once, one last, one time again. Oh, sure, sure, sorry, sorry. The disciple feels that he is nothing in himself, but in and through the master, he is enlivened by the prospect of being everything. I miss you, Ronnie. Be well. 
<clears throat> hey, Baba. Thank you. So, Sylaja, we finally got to you, dear. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Okay. My quote um, is about hidden conflict. This is Baba saying, the sure sign of a real hidden conflict is the sense that the whole of one's heart is not in the thought or action that happens to be dominant at the moment. There is a vague feeling of a narrowing down or a radical restriction of life. On such occasions, an attempt should be made to analyze one's mental state through deep introspection, for such analysis brings to light the hidden conflicts concerning the matter. Jay Bob. Yeah. That's a beautiful quote. I read, you read it beautifully too. It's <clears throat> Are you are you uh, still in Hyderabad or are you here in New Jersey? I am I I we came back in January uh Jeff early oh, wow. January yes me yeah. and the boys are here Prakash is still in Hyderabad. Uh huh. Yeah. Well go ahead and uh, read that again. Okay. This is a very this is a valuable insight from Bob. The sure sign of a real hidden conflict is the sense that the whole of one's heart is not in the thought or action that happens to be dominant at the moment. There is a vague, there is a vague feeling of a narrowing down or a radical restriction of life. On such occasions, an attempt should be made to analyze one's mental state through deep introspection, where such analysis brings to light the hidden conflicts concerning the matter. Yeah. <clears throat> any any thoughts uh, uh, of yours about that, or anything? Does it bring up anything? Or I had to read it a few times to uh, to completely. Uh, I mean, to get a good understanding of what Baba is saying here. But it does make sense. It's 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 the the introspection part of it, the self examination, which is so essential for all of us. To uh, you know, to combat our uh, the hidden conflicts and whatever we're battling with internally. Yeah. No. <clears throat> Yeah, I always like you say I, when I'm not, I feel I'm not in what's going on at at the moment in the action that or or that happens to be dominant at the moment. Then there's something in me that's at variance with what's going on in front of me. So I have to kind of <clears throat> go and and investigate what is it in me that's not in tune with what's going on around me. Yeah. So good hint. So, Je so Jeff. So, um, Salaja, so what if you do that introspection and you just have confusion? You just don't, it's not, you don't have clarity. I, n I never have clarity. <laughs> I'm always confused. I'm, I'm still um, trying <laughs> to come to terms with a lot of things, but I, I ask Baba for help constantly. Yeah. That's my out too. I just say, okay, Baba, I don't get it. But <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> There's an old saying that the highest attainment of the rational mind is bewilderment. <laughs> yeah. So take, take heart, all of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Gabriella, would you like to share? Are you there, Gabrielle? Oh, you got muted. Sorry. Try again. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, persistent and continuous performance of good deeds wears out selfishness. 
Jay Papa. Read that again. <laughs> <laughs> Persistent and continuous performance of good deeds wears out selfishness. Baba. So it's just so totally true and the persistent and continuous part is important there. But not just to do something and let it be, but just to um, continue to do it even when it's not easy. And then it, it does shift things about and I've certainly been experiencing that lately in my life. So thanks. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. I know we're all in that same boat of persistence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have from India, Shailaja and Josima. Actually, Connecticut, but... <laughs> oh, you're in Connecticut? I never knew that. I thought you were in Pune or someplace. <laughs> so that's how well I know you. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Here is my quote. <clears throat> Everyday life must be guided by discrimination and inspired by the highest intuitions. The difficult thing is to act upon the knowledge one has. And one of the best methods of adding to one's own spiritual wisdom is to make use of this inherent knowledge. If the sadhana, uh, spiritual practice, of knowledge is to be be fruitful it must be implemented at every step by due emphasis on action ms irani let's run that by again jasima <laughs> yeah, <sure. clears throat> would you speak closer to the microphone please okay sure yep. Everyday life must be guided by discrimination and inspired by the highest intuitions. The difficult thing is to act upon the knowledge one has. And one of the best methods of adding to one's own spiritual wisdom is to make use of this inherent knowledge. If the sadhana, spiritual practice, of knowledge is to be, fru be fruitful, it must be implemented at every step by due emphasis on action. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Jay Baba, here's uh, my quote. The soul cannot receive in any appreciable measure the renewal which the divine consciousness would pour upon it owing to the resistance of the dense material plane upon which it lives. However, it is precisely these divine radiations, meager as they may be, which enable the matter-ridden soul to face its darkness and suffering and to make the effort to rise to higher realms of energy and mind. Take life lightly where material affairs are concerned and seriously where spiritual development is in question. MS Irani. Once again, Shalaja. Yeah. The soul cannot receive in any appreciable measure the renewal which the divine consciousness would pour upon it owing to the resistance of the dense material plane upon which it lives. However, it is precisely these divine radiations, meager as they may be, which enable the matter-ridden soul to face its darkness and suffering and to make the effort to rise to the higher realms of energy and mind. Take life lightly where material affairs are concerned and seriously where spiritual development is in question. I like that one, um, yeah. especially that part, meager though they may be, that we may experience it just as a little, not quite so much. Um, we were saying, I don't feel you, Baba, or I don't know that it's really there, but meager though it may be, it is the key to 
um, our opening our hearts and being um, being one with him. So I like that little phrase in there. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> All nice. the way from Connecticut. It, it makes me think um, of a really shortened form of a, a quote Baba gave that says what you just read more briefly. Take life lightly and God seriously. Yeah. So true. <clears throat> okay, Michelle, I suspect you want to read Marvin's. Michelle Schaefer, are you there? Here, I'm here. Sorry, I, I've been working and so building a museum store association website. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Jay Baba. Love answers all questions. For ignore, it ignores questioning itself. The more you love me, the less you question, Ms. Irani. Once again, Michelle. Love answers all questions, for it ignores questioning itself. The more you love me, the less you question, Ms. Irani. And I can't say what Marv has to say about it, but it seems to me pretty perfect for him because that's what he tries to do. Here it is, the Baba. You give it to him. <clears throat> Jeff Baba. Yeah. Hey, Baba. What a beautiful day. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Baba. So, Telly, you're next. Oops, try again, unmute again, there you go. The real task of the aspirin is to pierce through his own layers of self-imposed self-sufficiency and insensitivity so that he may expose a layer of vital awareness to the world around about him, which would teach him if we were allowed. Mayor Baba. Again, please. The real task of the aspirant is to pierce through his own layers of self-imposed self-sufficiency and insensitivity so that he may expose a layer of vital awareness to the world about him, which would teach him if it were allowed. Mayor Baba. I should say that Telly worked for the Voice of America, and he's the radio, and he's got a voice, <laughs> beautiful voice. And we'll be seeing him in the plays on Sunday, too. <laughs> Patty, can you unmute? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to prep dinner. Okay. <laughs> I love hearing it, this from everyone. Thank you, Jay Baba, and happy birthday. Okay. The only real desire is to see God. The only real longing is to become one with God. To desire the real desire and to long for the real longing you need my grace and you cannot have that until you surrender all your desires and all your longings to me ms sarani and, and that seems like a very very clear uh, explanation of what we should be desiring <laughs> and then what comes when we finally uh give up all the other desires so I was happy to get that. Beautiful. Yeah, Jay Baba. Okay, Shraddha.
Say bye bye everyone. Happy bye bye's birthday. Yes. Um. Uh, here's here's my quote. The things of beauty can become the source of purity, happiness, and inspiration. The works of art can ennoble and raise the consciousness of people. The attainments of science can redeem humanity from unnecessary suffering and handicaps. And political action can be instrumental in establishing a real brotherhood of humanity. MS Irani. It's beautiful, he says, the works of art can ennoble and raise the consciousness of people. And even though Baba discouraged anything to be involved with political activity, it seems like political action also has the power to bring about real brotherhood of humanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, how does yeah. that work? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Public servants. <clears throat> what quote number is that? It's 586. Because then you can go to Angela and say, oh, can you send me that one, please? Jay Baba. Yeah. Jay Baba. Yeah, Angela doesn't have enough to do. Why did she sleep? You can ask me. I'll, I'll look it up for you. Um, Jay. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. You in the car? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll have to switch off screens to read mine. Uh, happy birthday, Baba. And hello, everybody. There you go. <clears throat> when understanding is our law, we have love, which is imperishable, and action, which is dynamically created. Love without entanglement and action without attachment to results. MS Irani. Once again, I missed that last word. Yeah. Yes. When understanding is our law, we have love, which is imperishable, and action, which is dynamically creative. Dash. Love without entanglement entanglement and action without attachment to results. Yeah, I hope you're not double parked there, Jay. <laughs> no, <clears throat> I'm good. <laughs> We're all kind of double parked in this world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Rebecca Kent, are you ready? Life and love are inseparable from each other. Where there is life, there is love. Even the most rudimentary consciousness is always trying to burst out of its limitations and experience some kind of unity with other forms. And I feel this is a wonderful message to remind me about when I'm dealing with people that seem so full of rage and that somehow that is their effort to burst out <laughs> of their limitations and experience some kind of unity with other forms, <laughs> you know, I, I, I may not be interpreting it that way in the moment. But if I can, you know, at least pause long enough to consider it from that perspective, it helps me. Yeah, beautiful, Becky. <clears throat> Thank you for that. That was very helpful. So we've gone through all the hands, Jeff. Uh huh. <clears throat> well, now we can go. We can go around and beg people. <clears throat> <clears throat> Should I call on people at will? 
Uh, no, no, no just, well, let's just see. Just... Some people may come forward. Okay. <clears throat> oh, we got one. Here we go. William Byers. Thank you. Okay, here is one on patience. There was one quote from Baba on patience a while back, and this is a different one. Patience may be called the power of endurance during the absence of the desired things or conditions. Patience is a life power. It is a spiritual power. And the greatest virtue that one can have for it is a cross. And on this, the patient one is crucified. And as resurrection follows crucifixion, so all success and happiness must follow the trying moments of patience. Ooh, we need to hear that one again. Could you speak a little louder, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Patience may be called the power of endurance during the absence of the desired things or conditions. Patience is a life power. It is a spiritual power. And the greatest virtue that one can have for it is a cross. And on this, the patient one is crucified. And as resurrection follows crucifixion, though all success and happiness must follow the trying moments of patience. There was a, a quote from Baba that was read earlier in the meeting where Baba said to do it out of love and not out of compulsion. And that that came to mind for me when I was reading my quote here. Um, to have patience out of love and not out of compulsion. And um, I, I don't I don't know if Baba would apply that here or not, but um, to me it's it struck me that if one is having patience out of compulsion, I can't get it may be a little like having a, a martyr complex, do you know the, uh, no, I don't but to do it out of love is, of course, the, the ideal. And that's all for that. Yeah, um, yeah thank you. <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> Very interesting. And he didn't even try our patience. For the reading. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth, mellow, yeah. <clears throat> Katie Lawton, go ahead and share, please. Hi, everybody. Um, happy Baba's birthday. I just want to say I think it's interesting that I got called on after that patient quote because I've never heard that quote before, and I think it's amazing. And I said this week, I'm probably the most impatient person in the world. <laughs> so I needed to hear that. Thank you, William. <laughs> Thank you, Baba. Um, the quote that I got says, never try to force your mind to check your thoughts. Thoughts may and will come. Do not try either to invite them or to drive them away. Let thoughts of lust, anger, and greed come. They must come. Fire must reach its zenith, and then it will gradually subside. If you try to stop them, they will attack you again with, sorry, I'm scrolling on my phone, with double force. So let them come and be sent away, and not let them turn into action. Um, so a good one. <laughs> I thought, uh, and, and as I said, I've really been trying to work with my patients. Uh, well, it's lifelong, but especially this week in particular. So I thought that it's interesting to try to 
allow the thoughts come, the impatience perhaps, but then to try not to act on it, there's the rub. <laughs> So true. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. If there's anyone who's having difficulty raising their hand, just go ahead and unmute now. And <laughs> I do. I do. I want to share. Okay. Marcia. Go ahead, sweetie. Thanks. Um, first, I want to tell Sue Lerner. Sue? You're breaking um, I up a bit. To, I, wanted, I, I wanted to thank you for your story, because whenever I hear those stories, it's Baba reminding me, see, I know what's going on, and I can cater to each one of you just the way you need me. So I love those kinds of stories. And um, thank you for sharing that. So I got- um, Marta, you're breaking up a bit. Can you jiggle your headset connection a little bit? This thing? This? Yeah. Can you jiggle the connection just to make sure it's in? Oh, I don't know. It's wireless. Oh, it's wireless. Oh, okay. That mm -hmm. could be the uh, issue, but she could also go into settings and check her input level, maybe up for another meeting. I'll just go. Yeah. Let me you're okay. Go you're off. okay for now. Yeah, you're okay for now. I'll just go off the headset. Oh, that oh that's perfect. perfect. Thank you. I hardly ever speak. I mean, in real life, I speak. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So this is, I love this because this is such a restful one for me. It's Baba says to me, be patient. Wait in my love. Those who wait for me never wait in vain. Divine love and divine happiness await the one who is victorious and ho who holds out to the bitter end. I'll read it again. Be patient, wait in my love. Those who wait for me never wait in vain. Divine love and divine happiness await the one who is victorious and who holds out to the bitter end. Beautiful. Yeah, that was that was really nice. It Marta? kind of gives me permission to wait. Yes, yes Sue. Hi. Yes, hi. Thanks for what you said, but it's a thank you to Baba's Grace, of course, that I could share that story. And now I'm sort of chuckling with the with the quote you just read about waiting until the bitter end. It was 47 years before I finally finally came to me. <laughs> so there you go it's a full circle no matter how you look at it it's just good yeah very, good. very nice thank you both thank you guys <clears throat> mary you've been waiting patiently go ahead this is from montreal folks yay hi everyone so I didn't get a quote or I don't know how to get my quote because I'm kind of new to this circle of friends um, and Zoom thing for Bala. So uh, I grabbed the first book, Baba book that I came across and I looked for a quote and this is the first one that showed up, the only one that showed up from this book. Uh, so I'll read it. I have not come to establish any new religion. The book which I shall make people read is the book of the heart, which holds the key to the mystery of life. And I just thought it's so much, so many of the quotes we've been talking about it are about the heart and our relationship with our heart and with Baba. And so it seems to fit. <clears throat> Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow. So Srinagas, yeah. I I think you've been trying to uh, raise your hand. Can you unmute and share with us? Yeah. Srinagesh? Yeah, Jai Mer Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. When the mind encroaches upon the province of the heart, it does so by requiring assurance or conviction as a precedent condition 
that must be fulfilled before there is release of love. Yeah. Should I read it again? Yeah. Where are you in India or are you here in the States? Yeah, I'm in Mumbai, India, yes. Mumbai, okay. Ah, wonderful. Yeah, go ahead. Go, do it again. When the mind encroaches upon the province of the heart, it does so by requiring assurance or conviction as a precedent condition that must be fulfilled before there is release of love. Mm -hmm. MS Irani. Mm, thank you. Beautifully read, too. Thank you, Shri. And thanks for joining us at three in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I missed right last away. time, so I thought I should join. <laughs> Good. Glad to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Was Baba's day hey, yesterday? Baba. Is this the 26th for you? Shri? Yeah, it's 26th, uh -huh. three o'clock. Three o'clock so at midnight. Uh -huh. or early morning. So full of love. <laughs> You got all filled up yesterday. You had to come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Jai Mar Baba. Jai Baba. Janice. Go ahead and unmute. Okay. All right. Those with unclouded vision see the significance of all that life brings in terms of the irresistible law of truth. They accept life as it is without bitterness or dissatisfaction. For them, the truth which they see and realize is enough. It stands fully self-justified. M.S. Irani. Ooh. Janice, how about doing that one again? That's lovely. Okay, those with unclouded vision see the significance of all that life brings in terms of the ir irresistible law of truth. They accept life as it is without bitterness or dissatisfaction. For them, the truth, in a, with a capital T, which they see and realize is enough. It stands fully self-justified. M.S. Irani. Oh, great. Nice. <clears throat> well, as long as I'm here, can I, uh, can I yeah. read, read one too? Um, Go, Jack. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I didn't get one in the email, so I... Uh, I just picked one out here. I'll say Baba picked it out for me, I hope. Um, people wait for the big moment, the great event, and forget that happiness comes from building steadily on the small daily things of life. People wait for that special moment to express love and forget that love springs from thoughtfulness practiced every day. People wait, but waiting is future. And now is always the time. Mayor Baba. Oh, wonderful quote. Read that one again. Boy, I, I don't remember that one. <laughs> People wait for the big moment, the great event, and forget that happiness comes from building steadily on the small daily things of life. People wait for that special moment to express love and forget that love springs from the thoughtfulness practiced every day. People wait, but waiting is future, and now is always the time. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I don't Jack, even remember that one. What's that from, Jack? Do you have well, that? Well, actually, this is from May Her Baba, May Her Baba Quotes on, okay. uh, on the internet. So okay. I can't, <laughs> I yeah. can't really verify where that's from, but uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, wherever it's from, and I, I know it's from Baba, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Elizabeth. 
Hello, Che Bob, everybody. Happy Baba's birthday. Jay well, Bob. I think Baba must be after me because I think I have the same quote I got at Christmas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you? And it's an awful quote. <laughs> what are the chances? What are the chances? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got to go. <laughs> You got to go back to the salt mines, huh? I'm definitely in the salt mines. Okay, you, know, you guys are really gonna laugh, but it's about self-effacement. Okay. Try to get it this time. Okay, so here it is. Uh, let me get serious for a minute. <laughs> well, at least at least you're seeing the humor of it this time. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, um, the way of my work is the way of effacement which is the way of strength, not of weakness. And through it, you become mature in my love. Yeah. <clears throat> Once again, Elizabeth. The way of my work is the way of effacement, which is the way of strength, not of weakness. And through it, you become mature in my love it's one of my most favorite quotes of baba i read that every single day before i start my work wow yeah. that. Great. And darwin read that out in the east west gathering really okay so, so what does effacement mean effacement is effacement when, mean? it means a lessening of yourself it's kind of like wiping your face away. So it's, you know, when you're basically put down, you know, um, but what Bob is saying is that it's not a weakness. And I'll give you a great example of this. <laughs> when Merritt passed away, I was, I happened to be at the Baba Center and I wrote her, I wrote a poem and I was reading it very seriously. And I was, I was really upset. And then there's a line, it was rhyming, and the rhyme ended in the word river. But I was so caught up in it emotionally, I read liver, and the whole place burst out laughing. Now talk about feeling embarrassed and self-effaced, but things like that happen to me a lot. <laughs> but we love you anyway. Yes. Thank you, God. The divine, the divine liver. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget that. Okay, Che Baba. <laughs> and Elizabeth, Baba. Um, I think you characterized it as something like a horrible quote. I find it to be an utterly wonderful and profound and marvelous quote. Well, you know, I think I'm taking it um, in a probably a selfish way. You know, probably a way that needs more self-effacement. So, <laughs> uh, it's just that I've gotten it twice in, in random drawing. So I feel like somebody's telling me something that I need to work on it more. So, but I guess I, it, he, he does say here, it's not of weakness, but of strength. Because if I keep in this process of self-effacement, which we all are doing, that's the ego diminishment which we have to go through in order to get to the goal of God realization anyway. So I guess it's just a way of um, saying, keep, keep at it, keep maturing in my love. And, um, and how so, wonderful you know, is that? It, it is, it is, <laughs> I, you know, I was <laughs> joking. <laughs> you know, there's, you know, there is a, I, oh, the, go ahead, Mayor Prasad. There is a continuation of that quote. Uh, it goes like, I, I read this every day, so I remember it more or less by heart. So the continuation of that is, at this stage, you cannot know what real love is. But by working for me, as you should work for me, you will arrive at that ripeness where in a moment, I can give you that which you have been longing, which you have been seeking for millions of years oh my god now that does it mm -hmm. can you say that one Thank more time start. yeah do it mayor Prasad. do that do the whole oh thing oh the whole oh. thing um 
the way of my work is the way of effacement which is way of strength not of weakness and through it you become mature in my love at this stage you cannot know what real love is but by working for me as you should work for me you will arrive at that at that ripeness where uh, you will arrive at that ripeness where in a moment i can give you that which you have been seeking for millions of years beautiful wow <laughs> Dar that Dar isn't uh, a wonderful quote i've never heard one <laughs> I've, well, I've quoted this one of Darwin's, which is kind of related, where he used to say, with kind of an enigmatic grin on his face, <clears throat> he would say, sooner or later, you discover you're nobody. And that is not an unhappy discovery. <laughs> because as you kind of vacate yourself, then Baba comes in and lives your life for you more and more. <clears throat> Well, thank Elizabeth, you. I just, I just want to say to Elizabeth, the way that's written, it's Baba doing it. It's, you know, we do have to do the work and everything, but it's him, his way of working on you, on us, on me. <clears throat> right at the beginning, the way it's said. The way of my work is the way of effacement. It's his work. I looked up the, um, the what it means, effacement. Um, the act of wiping out erasing or doing away with something the act or habit of humbly keeping oneself in the, self in the background self-effacement it also means the thinning of bodily tissue especially of the cervix to prepare for childbirth so I thought <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll skip that one <laughs> a new birth elizabeth a new birth that's not universal that quote <laughs> Okay, wow. we have a few more few more hands to get through. Hang on, yeah. Jeff. I'll get to you in a minute. Okay, Gail, you're next. Thanks, thanks. Um, I am not driving at this very moment. Um, I'm in my car, but I, I have more to drive. But I'm being safe. Okay, this is a great one. Trust God completely, and He will solve all your difficulties. Faithfully leave everything to him and he will see to everything ms irani and that yeah. seems very appropriate for me now to always remember that that baba's got this he's got it beautiful yeah i'll re read it again because it's just yeah. so wonderful <clears throat> trust god completely and he will solve all your difficulties faithfully leave everything to him and he will see to everything. Hmm. Sounds That's, too easy. Thank you. That was one thank of you. Ella. That was one of Ella Winterfeld's favorite quotes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you, Gail. Jeff Espel, you have something to share? This is from Mayor Baba Calling. And the title is Gain Knowledge Eternal, and it's very much related to what everybody's been offering. Knowledge, self-realization, uproots, illusions, doubts, and worries, and apparent sufferings are instantaneously replaced by everlasting peace and eternal bliss, which is the goal of existence. Do not hope because this knowledge is beyond hoping and waiting. Do not reason because the knowledge cannot be comprehended or thought of. Do not doubt because the knowledge is the certainty of certainties. Do not live the life of the senses because the lusty greedy, false, impure minds cannot reach this knowledge. Love God as the soul of your souls. And in the height of this love has 
this, this knowledge. Why is it so difficult to find God? It is because you are looking for something you have never lost. Hey, Jeff, how about reading that again, please? Yes, sir. Uh, with deep gratitude. Gain knowledge eternal. Knowledge, self-realization, uproots illusions, doubts and worries and apparent sufferings are instantaneously replaced by everlasting peace and eternal bliss which is the goal of existence. Knowledge, self-realization, uproots illusions, doubts, and worries, and apparent sufferings are instantaneously replaced by everlasting peace and eternal bliss, which is the goal of existence. Do not hope, because this knowledge is beyond hoping. Do not hope because this knowledge is beyond hoping and waiting. Do not reason because the knowledge cannot be comprehended or thought of. Do not doubt because the knowledge is the certainty of certainties. Do not live the life of the senses because the lusty, greedy, false, impure minds cannot reach this knowledge love god love god as the soul of your souls and in the height of this love lies this knowledge love god love baba as the soul of your souls and in the height of this love in the height of this love lies this knowledge. Why is it so difficult to find God? Why is it so difficult to find God? Why is it so difficult to find God? It is because you are looking for something you have never lost. Yeah. Did my best to read it as good as I could. You did. did beautifully. Fine. Thank you, Jeff. Beautifully. Wow. Well, we're kind of coming down the home stretch, but I see Betty is. <clears throat> yeah, Angela says we can go as long as we want. Oh. Might not be good news for you, Jeff, but. <laughs> I have to go to work in a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hear Betty. Yeah. Betty, oh. unmute. Unmute, Judy. My internet keeps cutting out, so if I go away, that's why. <laughs> At least you're warm. I uh, uh, indeed, and it's been this has been so wonderful, Jeff and Cassandra and everybody. What what a time! It's been wonderful. Pain is my grace. This is my real mercy, which descends on a very very select few. These are my friends. These are my lovers to whom I give the gift of sorrow and distress. It is a gift much greater than gold of incalculable value and not given to all. This gift is only for my beloved children. Remember that I love most those whose hearts I pierce and who through their hearts are wounded. Stay with me. M.S. Irani. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Read that one again. That's uh, okay. intense. Gotta go again. <laughs> we, you know, normally you. when we do these things at the center, uh, there's certain ones that <clears throat> that are a little rougher <laughs> for people to read on New Year's. We kind of <laughs> we we kind of call them out just because people. Some of these people, you know, see one of these things and they think, yeah. "Oh my God, am I gonna have a terrible next year?" <laughs> I loved it. Uh, uh, it. It makes it okay. Pain is my grace. 
This is my real mercy, which descends on a very, very select few. These are my friends. These are my lovers to whom I give the gift of sorrow and distress. It is a gift much greater than gold of incalculable value and not given to all. This gift is only for my beloved children. Remember that I love most those whose hearts I pierce and who through their hearts are wounded. Stay with me. M.S. Arani. Mm. <clears throat> wow. You know, that reminds me of um, <clears throat> uh, St. Teresa of Avila. She was traveling with her nuns from one convent to another and they they got in the middle i think it was in the middle of winter and they got mired down in their in their wagon and this was a, a barefoot kind of order so they were really cold and and then the the, the the wagon is stuck and out of exasperation she went off <clears throat> a little ways and you know said to jesus you know i'm paraphrasing the early part of this, you know, here we are only trying to serve you. And then this, why does this have to happen? You know, and th now this is the part that is um, <clears throat> exact quote where Jesus said, this is the way I treat my friends. <laughs> and St. Teresa said, it's no wonder you have so few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a I mean that's a true quote <laughs> I love it that she had such a sense of humor yeah yeah that's uh really good that's wonderful I'm remembering from from that a uh, quote that that Monty once said uh back in I think it was 91 I know it was in Mondeley Hall uh, and she said Baba said um sometimes for my work, I have to sacrifice even my nearest and dearest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to check if there's anybody who didn't get a chance to raise their hand or read if they wanted to read. I don't see. Or wants to read a second time. No, we've. <laughs> I think we're yeah I think um, yeah. you know it's it's amazing how <clears throat> you know how I mean the, how profound all, each one of these things and they're all different aspects different camera angles on the one truth I mean it's mm -hmm. it's and to, to hear it all in one you know one session like this I mean if you read the discourses it's these are just like gems that you get and each person is holding them out. It's really quite amazing. The other thing I was thinking, Jeff, um, is that Elizabeth was not keen on her saying, but then because other people fed into it and Meher Prasad told the whole story, then everything, the box opened, you yeah. know, it was like more precious. <clears throat> So the interaction of all of us together is just a miracle yeah. of God. Just and, and I want to thank everybody for their open-hearted participation. That, that's yeah. what makes this work. So <clears throat> Baba comes through all of you. Yeah, this has been beautiful. I w except one one last, we're going to get Danny, Danny Rubenstein to, um, does he have a quote? You know, he he just got back from the store. Ah, you know, he looked for quotes at the store, but uh, there was nothing <laughs> I could get. But anyway, <laughs> I don't have anything prepared, and I'm sorry, but it's oh, good oh, okay. <laughs> so you didn't get a quote sent to you, yeah? We we share the same email, um, so oh, okay. One quote, oh, right. yeah. Um, Danny could read the quote again that we got. Um, good. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The greatest need of humanity today is love, love divine, which is pure and selfless, which awakens me to the proper sense and understanding of his real duty in life, to find true happiness 
in giving, not receiving, in serving and not in being served, and in more willingly participating in the suffering of others than in their happiness. <clears throat> Beautiful. Katie's has a hand up. Katie Lawton. Oh, yeah, Katie. Oh, you need to unmute. Um. Hi, it's actually Paula. It's Katie's uh, mother-in-law. I am. Um, ah. The kitchen okay. together, and um, she asked me if I had a quote, and I do. It is the rest assured. I'm always with you, helping you in your efforts to face things, to do my work, and to be happy. And that's Could you read that again, but yeah. a little bit louder? I felt that was hard to hear. Yeah, it was hard to hear. <clears throat> okay. Rest assured, I am always with you. Helping you in your efforts to face things, to do my work, and to be happy. And that's our wrap. That's yeah. nice. Hey, Katie, yeah. <clears throat> Here, well, here's the last one. I mean, unless, I, I, well, it just depends. Didn't Elizabeth want to read? Did you want to read again, Elizabeth? I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if Wayne wants to read his. <laughs> He's hiding. Maybe not the last one, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Got to oh. Go. Jeff's got to go. Uh, okay. No, no, go. I'm okay. I'm okay. You all right for now? Okay. Okay. Well, you're talking ahead, about Jeff. Wayne Myers. Does he have one? I'm trying to get him to share. <laughs> Wayne, there he is. Come on, Wayne. <laughs> we want to hear yours. <clears throat> Have to unmute. Uh, you're unmuted, so I'm not sure we're not hearing you. Are you dialed in? If you're dialed in, Wayne, you have to unmute your phone. We get star nine. There you okay, go. Okay, can you hear me yeah, now? We got, yep. we got Sorry you. about that, folks. Okay. <laughs> we're trying to wrap this up here. Okay, since you asked, here's the quote. It's a beauty. If you want to fall in love with me, first you have to start remembering me, thinking about me. Then later comes love, and lastly comes sight of me. You begin to love me by finding ways and means to remember me as often as possible. Then your heart and mind aid you, and my grace is always there to help you come closer. You begin to remember me within yourself by withdrawing your attention from all outward attraction. M.S. Arani. Mm -hmm. J. Baba. Ooh, Wayne, read that one again. I forgot that okay. one. Gladly. Happy birth, before I do, happy birthday, Baba. I love all these beautiful companions in Baba, it's, it's a joy, it's a joy and a gift. Yeah. Okay, here we go. If you want to fall in love with me, first you have to start remembering me, thinking about me, then later comes love, and lastly comes sight of me. You begin to love me by finding ways and means to remember me as often as possible. Then your heart and mind aid you, and my grace is always there to help you come closer. You begin to remember me within yourself by withdrawing your attention from all outward attraction. M.S. Arani. Mm. J. Baba. Great quote, Baba. Wayne. Wonderful. Perfect. <clears throat> Well, why don't you finish up, Jeff? I'll stop the recording, and then if oh. people want to continue sharing, yeah, they can do that. Okay. You know, I once asked, "Can you hear me?" Yes. I once asked Marwan. He Marwan Jessawala was his one of his main things was saying Baba's name inwardly. You know, he would say it would protect you from the world. It would hollow you out so Baba can live more and more in you. <clears throat> and I once asked him. Uh, is saying Baba's name inwardly a form of service? 
And he said, yes. So, you know, if you're ever kind of stuck waiting in a grocery line, <laughs> and you, ha you can be saying Baba's name and be helping the world. But anyway, this is, this is what uh, I hadn't come across this quote. It came into my hands recently. This is because uh, it extends the saying of Baba's name over to a larger field. Baba says, only repetition of my name will suffice to free the whole world from its entanglements. Very unusual quote. I'll read it again. <clears throat> only repetition, repetition of my name will suffice to free the whole world from its entanglements. Wonderful. So there's, I mean, Baba did say at various times that his name, my name is more powerful than I am. Yeah. Can you imagine? But he took his name right from the beginning, his own name, all those years. So it is invested with great substance, power, and love. Yeah. Hey, so shall we have a few moments of silence before we um, <coughs> go yes. to the um, video to arcade? The no. <laughs> <laughs> to the free-for-all, you mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay.